More than two years have passed since the Fukushima nuclear power plant disaster, and Japanese authorities are still trying to contain radioactive water from leaking out into the Pacific Ocean. And while it could take years to get an accurate understanding of what damage has been done, the concerns are very real today, including here in Korea. Our Kim Hyun Bin joins us from the News Center to tell us more. So, Hyun Bin, how serious is the situation over there? Well, Tokyo Electric Power Company officials said that plant workers apparently overlooked signs of leaks and failed to notice an open valve for several weeks. The results were 300 tons of water with radioactive particles such as cesium and strontium linked to bone cancer leaking out to the Fukushima Daiichi plant and into the Pacific Ocean. Japan has come up with numerous methods to contain the leak, but all of them have failed so far. The latest idea is building an underground containment wall made of ice to try to halt the flow. So many attempts before have failed. Are the authorities confident that this latest particular method will work, Hyunbin? Well, there's too much uncertainty to be confident. The containment wall won't be completed until 2015, meaning that contam contaminated water will continue to leak from Fukushima for the next couple of years. If and when it is completed, the wall will be 1.4 kilometers in length, which will make it the world's longest continuous stretch of artificially frozen earth. But how effective will it be? It's a serious issue, and it's going to be hard to contain it. First of all, the area is too vast, and there are too many radioactive leaks. Concerns and doubts are on the rise about whether they'll be able to successfully seal the leaks. So, Hyunbin, you said 300 tons of radioactive water has leaked out so far. How's that going to affect us here in Korea and the rest of the international community? Well, the majority of the radioactive materials are cesium, strontium, and tritium. Uh, that is what's flowing from the water at Fukushima. Uh, of those materials, cesium is most predominant. Uh, it makes up nearly 90% of the radioactive substances, and it can travel in water while the other two, strontium and tritium, sink to the ocean floor because they are too heavy. These two substances are the ones you have to worry about because they can accumulate in your body for roughly 30 years. But since they sink to the bottom of the ocean floor, there's little concerns to be had. For a better understanding of what is going on, let's have a look at a graph. The Fukushima disaster occurred in March 2011, leaking hundreds of tons of radioactive water and hundreds of thousands of becquerels into the ocean, a becquerel being the way radioactivity is measured. The radioactive materials traveled in ocean currents to the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and as time goes on, the radioactive levels of those materials traveling around the Pacific will diminish. Currently, the materials is estimated to contain four becquerels of radiation per cubic meter, which is two becquerel increase from before the accident. By 2016, the current will move the contaminated water to western Canada or the north, northwestern U.S., and by that time, the contaminated water will be at 3.5 becquerels, a slight decrease from its current level. By the time the water makes its way all around the Pacific and back to Korea, it will be the tw year 2022 or so, and by that time, the contamination level will have decreased to its normal state for, uh, from before the accident to about two becquerels per cubic meter. Well, right now it seems like the post-Fukushima danger is very real. And here in Korea, there has been some controversy over imported fish from Japan with high amount of radioactive materials found in them. So what is the Korean government doing to prevent this, Hyunbin? Uh, for that, let's take a look at our chart. Uh, the Korean government set a safe limit of radiation in food at 300 becquerels per kilogram. If food items are under that level, they have a green light to be imported into Korea. The highest radiation level found in a fish imported from Japan since 2011 was 97 becquerels, nowhere near the limit. Japan lowered its import limit from 500 to 100 becquerels in April 2012. Other countries like the U.S. have limits as high as 1,200. We have been, we've been taught to believe that all radioactive particles are bad for humans. Is, is, is that not the case? Well, an expert I spoke with can answer that question for us. 300 becquerel is a really low amount, and uh, if you eat and, uh, almost every day, and uh, it is uh, going above the dose limit of the five millisievert in a year. <coughs> so, uh, if you consume just uh, one time or maybe several <coughs> times, it doesn't matter at all, <coughs> because in the we uh, observed almost other and the radioactive sources such as potassium 40 is uh, abundant in the food. It's other food. It's very natural sources. 
Uh, so basically, Dr. Kong is saying that radiation is all around us, and even if humans were to eat a fish contaminated with cesium, whatever radiation were to enter the body will be released in time with no ill effects. Experts I have talked to, as well as others throughout the world, believe the levels of radiation are not much of a concern at this point in time, and would only become a concern if highly radioactive fish from near the disaster site is imported. Okay, thank you so much for that very insightful report, Hyunbin. That was our Kim Hyunbin reporting live for us on the radioactive leaks from Fukushima.